Hello, friends and neighbors. Jedi Phoenix from here once again. Glad to have you back. If you are new to the channel, I bid you welcome as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything I got coming down the road. Uh, this is probably going to be my last um, Ultra Saber review for a while, anyway. Uh, only because, as I mentioned in my previous video, I am going to start learning how to do my own installations for the electronics and the soundboards. My eventual goal, it'll take a little bit of time to get there, but my eventual goal is to be able to buy empty hilts and to do the installations myself. Um, you know, once I get to that point, I'll be back ordering Ultra Sabres, the empty hilts, and uh, unboxings for that. Then once I have all the goodies installed, I'll be able to review the hilts that way. So it will take a little bit of time to get there. I um, ordered a whole mess of stuff off of Amazon. I've been watching a lot of videos, learning how to do all this. Uh, my first thing is going to be um, some do-it-yourself projects to make sure that I'm used to soldering. And then once I'm satisfied I'm at that point, then I'll get brave and uh, tackle the empty hills and see what happens that way. But. It's going to take time, but we'll get there. Um, you know, I'll be able to document all of that as well on this channel, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but in the meantime, let us get to business. This, of course, is the, um, the Spectre from Ultra Sabres. You uh, may be wondering when I did the unboxing. If you missed it, it was the first live stream that I did back in June. Uh, this came on the same day as that live stream, so I was able to unbox this live on the air during that, so it was a little bit of a treat. This one took some time to get here. I'm not going to lie. Um, I ordered it in January, early January, and it didn't arrive until late June. But to be fair to the company, I am going to be fair to the company. The reason it took so long, or I should say the reason I waited so long, was because I made myself wait. All right? There were various delays in the hilts and in the components, and Ultra Sabres was in touch with me quite a bit during that time, offering me alternate hilts and offering me um, variations of this particular one. Uh, they would offer me, you know, the hilt without the engraving. They'd offer me the hilt without the windows. And as much as I'm thankful to them for keeping in touch and offering me the alternates, I wanted what I wanted. So I stuck to my guns. And the reason I waited so long was because I made myself wait. But lo and behold, you know, patience rewarded. I got the one that I wanted. So I'll just let you have another look at it before I go into the explanation of it. The one thing I didn't get was the D-ring on the pommel. That is another variation that they offer. And I didn't want the D-ring. I didn't need the D-ring, so I passed on that. It's, uh, this is inspired by um, Kanan Jarrus' saber from Star Wars Rebels. Of course, I say inspired by because as I'm sure many will know, it is not an exact replica of it. Uh, as usual with Ultra Sabres, it is a long hilt. It's also kind of thick in the middle, which is standard for them. Of course, that's how their hilts run. As I mentioned before, I personally don't mind it. I like their hilt designs. This is no exception. I had my eye on this one for quite a while, even last year. I just waited until January to pull the trigger on it. And I gotta be honest, if you've been watching my channel, you know that their version of the Fallen is my favorite of their hilts. This one's probably a close second, very close second. All right. Um, very sturdy. Very battle ready. I have put this through the paces with my kids. Um, it, holds up, it holds up very nicely. 
So no problem with that. I haven't had any issues with this. Um, either the hilt itself or the electronics inside. You know, nothing's come loose, nothing's come, uh, come apart. As of now, anyway. Uh, one thing that I do need to mention. All right, I do have, if you've been watching the channel, I do have several uh, helts with the Suba, the Suba South of the emitter. One thing about this hilt in particular, and I don't know if the camera, if I can get the camera to pick it up, I guess I can if I do it like that. Hang on a minute, bear with me here a minute, guys. So one thing about this particular hilt with the Suba, if you notice underneath, it kind of slants downward as opposed to just going straight against the hilt. And one advantage of that style with the, the slant going down, when I'm swinging the saber around, okay, as I go into this motion here, usually on the Suba style, this ends up digging into my hand, right about there. But the way that they've done this one, it kind of, it's, it's hard to explain, but that slant lets the emitter kind of fit into a pocket and not dig into my hand as much as other sabers with this style have. And by this style, I mean with the Suba, all right? And as a result, this is probably one of the more comfortable hilts I have for, at least with the Suba style, as far as swinging like this. So, say what you will, but Ultra Sabers really did all right with the design on this one. At least I think so. Let me fire this up so you can see. So this one I got Sunrider's Destiny for the color. And it is the Obsidian uh, V4 for now. I love that color. And as usual, sound is very, uh, very loud, very crisp. Let's turn the lights off so you can see how bright it is. There we go. Yeah, I like this one, you can tell. <laughs> Let me get the last back on. So I've never been able to do the OB Annie thing. So I just kind of do my own thing when it comes to the swinging. Um, <clears throat> that's another thing I do like about this, uh, this hilt is the, uh, the etching. You know, that's, they do offer it, with my cat bumping against my tripod here, they do offer uh, the hilt without the etching, but uh, I, I thought the etching was too cool, you know, I had to have it, so. There was a switch box here. And one thing about the switch boxes is if you're not used to them, it might interfere with your grip. Although it's not too bad on this one. Uh, for me, myself, I kind of hold it right about there. So I managed to avoid the switch box altogether. And because of the length of the hilt, got my other hand here, 
So, yeah. That switch box doesn't get in the way. You do get used to them. You do. And uh, the emitter, I just think, is very cool. Let me give you a good look at that. So all in all, uh, I am a fan of this one, of this version of it. And of course the pommel. Does come with a cup attack wheel, obviously. Which is one reason I didn't get the D-ring. I figure if it's going to come with a cup attack wheel, I don't need the D-ring. But... So all in all, uh, I am a fan of this one. Um, the wait was long, not going to deny it, but like I said, I made myself wait, and it was worth the wait. All right, I held out for the one that I wanted, and it was very much worth it. I'm not disappointed with this one at all. But uh, that's really going to do it for this one. I just uh, wanted to show this one off, give it a full review, and my impression of it. As I get further into my installation learning journey, whatever you want to call it, I will do some videos documenting that. And um, it's going to be for me myself that I'm doing this. I'm not going to be going into business for myself or anything. Not for a while, not for a long while. If I do try to make any money off of it, it's not going to be until that I'm satisfied that I'm good enough, you know? So, mostly going to be for me, myself. But, stay tuned for that. Uh, until the next video, whatever that is, whether it's a live stream or whatever have you, I do have some ideas in mind for future videos. But just stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. Find me on Instagram. I'll leave a link for all that in the description of this video. And until I see you in the next video or wherever, as always, be good, be well, be safe.